Hey, welcome to Resizing and Scaling Objects in PowerPoint. I'm Les McCarter from PowerUp Training, and I'm going to guide you through a variety of items that have to do with sizing text, graphic objects, photos, and other items within PowerPoint. We're going to be able to use different methods, the mouse, the mouse and the keyboard, and some menus for full control, and each has specific needs at specific times. I'll show you some tricks along the way. And if you have just a specific item you're looking to solve, do look at the bottom here on our YouTube channel and you will see the chapters so that you can jump to the topic of interest. Now, let's dive in to looking at resizing PowerPoint objects. We are starting in normal view, running the latest version of PowerPoint from Office 365. But all of these techniques will work with the older versions. First, let's look at text resizing. It seems simple enough as it is almost always controlled by the font point size. Here we're showing the starting size is 28 point and making it both larger and smaller with the grow and shrink icons. But we can also type in a number. Here's the surprising thing. When working within a text placeholder and you add more lines and there's room, PowerPoint will sneakily shrink your font size without asking. It only shows a small symbol on the bottom left corner of the placeholder box when the font size is under PowerPoint's auto control, a technique called auto fit. See, it's indicating that the font size has been adjusted to fit. Look how it's changed from 30 point to the smaller 25 point. Now, if I grow the size of the text box, the auto fit symbol goes away and the font size goes back to the original size of 30 point. Why is this important? It's convenient, but if you have two columns of text on a slide like here, and then the font size might no longer match, which would offend the style police. So be aware when you see the autofill symbol. Here's a footnote for only the latest versions of PowerPoint. If and only if you're using the two content slide layout, PowerPoint will help by shrinking both content boxes to match the same font size. Replay this video back about 45 seconds to see it live. Now, let's move to resizing graphic objects with the mouse. To resize an object, you must select it. And once selected, it will show eight grab handles for which you can click and drag to grow or shrink the object. If you watch carefully, you will see that the mouse cursor icon changes when you hover over the grab handles, indicating which direction you can grow or shrink, such as horizontal, diagonal, and vertical. Need more info on complete mouse control and cursor shape changes? Check our YouTube video listed up in the top right hand corner. There's also a four way arrow that is used to move the object, not resize it. Now it's just a simple matter of clicking one grab handle and resizing the objects based on the three directional choices I just named. It looks easy enough, but there are some subtleties here. When resizing our cat, everything looked normal because of two things. The image has a fixed set of proportions, and I just used the corners to change the size. But watch the strangeness when I grab a corner of the triangle, which is an unconstrained object. That lets me drag it in all sorts of directions to make it skinny or wide or tall or short or any of the combinations. But with the cat, Based on a setting we will soon see, I can control the proportions from the corner, but I can still change the aspect ratio if I use any of the middle grab handles. Here is a small annoyance and a fix. When you resize an object, it grows in the direction that you're pulling with your mouse. But most likely, you want to keep it centered around the middle point so that it grows in all direction. Watch as I select the triangle, and when I grow the shape, only one side grows outside our reference rectangular box. But if I hold down the control key on my keyboard and drag, now the shape grows around the center point, saving me the trouble of resizing the shape and then having to move it. 
Let's now take full control by using the menu of size and position. I will show you two ways to get to this menu, starting with a right mouse click on the object and then clicking size and position. Watch how I precisely grow and shrink the cat by increasing and decreasing the height. Both height and width change in unison because the cat object has lock aspect ratio turned on. Our previous triangle did not have this attribute on. If I turn it off, I can now use the manual controls to change height and width independently and possibly warping the image look by design. And once turned off, the mouse controls will also no longer be constrained. Another technique to resize or rescale the image is by percentage. So you could make it say 50% smaller. Note that the percentage reference size can be relative to the original picture size or the current object size. See the percentage change when clicking the box next to relative to original picture size. And the last item to take note on this menu is the reset, which resets the image to the original size by just one click. There's a second way to get to the menu besides the right mouse click. I'll close down the sizing pane and then with my object selected, I'm going to go click on the picture format menu. And bingo, up pops up two mini controls for height and width. And if I want to see the full menu, then I just click the downward expansion arrow to see all of my choices. Now we're going to work with multiple images. Let's say we want to take these three images and make them the exact same size and then align them. We could do this one image at a time, but it's hard to make them exactly the same if we use the mouse. Let me just undo what I tried to do and then use a technique of selecting all three images by lassoing them with a click and drag around the outside. Now we can use our menu controls to make them exactly the same height. And since they have locked aspect ratios, the widths will just follow along. So with the three images selected, I click on the picture format menu and then expand out the menu from the drop down menu arrow and watch as I try different sizes, how the photos pop to the exact same height. It is important that lock aspect ratio is turned on when working with a set of images that you do not want to distort when resizing. Let's do some cleanup. I'll position the group of photos in the center of the page and then use another special set of tools called align, which is found in the home menu and then within the drop down box for arrange. Or if you have the picture format menu already open, just locate the align drop down box. The align tool has been in PowerPoint for years, but an added aid for spatially clueless people like me, they've added little symbols next to the command to better understand how the command will impact the selected group of objects. In our case, we're going to align middle. Let's do one more refinement with our align tool. We want to distribute the images evenly apart by using the distribute horizontally. Just make sure the far left image and the far right images are where you want them to end up at. This tool works great for large collections of objects to evenly space them out. See the before in the top corner and the after. With just four actions, one, select the group, two, change the desired height of the images, and three, align middle, and then again, distribute. We have a great look and slide. Now let's transition to specialized objects and resizing, starting with tables. Basically a table is text with a bunch of borders. As a reference, I'll examine the font size of the existing text in this table, which is set at 18 points. Now with the table selected, 
Note the eight grab handles. I'll resize from the bottom corner in a diagonal direction, making it both wider and taller. And again, from the right bottom corner, as I attempt to get all the weekdays to fit nicely in each table cell. After resizing, we see that the font size is still 18 point. No change after resizing the table as a group. So to fix the Wednesday issue, I will select the whole table and then lower the font size from 18 to 16 by hand. And there it now fits. And now down the rabbit hole. I tweaked the font to a larger 17 and then I started to adjust each column one by one by one. And the table starts to look more and more messy with each tweak. To fully control the table, do look for our separate YouTube video on tables. On to the next specialized object, charts and graphs. These objects are a collection of three things. One, a resizable group. Two, text that needs to be resized by hand, just like tables. And three, individual objects that can't be adjusted. Before we resize the chart, look at the font size of 18.6 for the title. And then I will drag the right corner to get a nicely proportioned larger graph. When we recheck the title size, it's still 18.6, meaning that to customize text, we need to do them by hand. Pay close attention. You can select the interior portion of the chart and resize that independently of the full chart workspace. Not sure why, but it can be done. Lastly, the individual graph elements like the bars in the chart cannot be resized as they are representing specific numbers and only grow and shrink based on the graph number table. If you want to learn more about charts, look for our YouTube video. Now for our last specialized object, SmartArt. SmartArt showed up in PowerPoint 2013 and continues to become more and more sophisticated in helping visually show concept. As a preview, I will click the SmartArt and you can see the text control table where I can edit the content. But let me delete this and show you how easy it is to recreate. There are several ways to insert the SmartArt objects. Let's use the menus this time by going to the Insert Ribbon menu and choosing SmartArt. This tool needs its own YouTube tutorial from PowerUp Training. But as you scroll through the list, we see tons of choices to represent different types of concepts. Let's select the first choice from Matrix. SmartArt turns text into graphics. So I need to use the text table to list my ideas or concept by typing. I will get rid of the excess lines with no text and then check the font size of the first box, 24 point. Now I will resize the smart art by dragging the bottom left grab handle diagonally. And unlike charts and tables, the text font grows. Look, it went from 24 point to 28 point. Cool. But one word of warning, only grow the complete smart art object. Don't grab an individual element. It will let you, but the collection gets all messed up and the font changes no longer grow. There you go. Now you know everything about sizing and scaling objects in PowerPoint. If you found this helpful, do subscribe to our channel. Subscriptions help encourage me to make more free training for you. And if you like it, give us a thumbs up. And you got suggestions for other training classes on PowerPoint that you'd like to see in the future, leave them in the comments below. If you want to see all of our training, do visit us at our website of power-up.training where you'll find more free PowerPoint training, always free for you. Until the next time, go power up.